Here's what I've discovered. Even when I planted churches in Harley, we only, we planted two churches, started with 10 people. From day one, that church, we gave to missions. And I discovered a church that gives to missions is usually a church that is blessed here at home. So, did you look it up? Did you, did you find uh, this site that says 10 countries in need of prayer for peace? Do you see that one on your search thing? So, when I was, when I was looking, when I was working on this sermon last week, I was like, okay, I wonder what nations need prayer. I wonder what the priority. So, I want you to open up that, that article on the 10 nations that need prayer. You got it? All right. Those that have their phones, don't say nothing for right now. The rest of you, what do you think is the number one nation that needs prayer in the world? America? Yeah, good. I, I don't think America's on the list. Okay, want to take another guess? I hear Israel. So what is number one for the phone people? The Holy Land. Well, that's obviously Mars, um, but okay. Israel. So I was like, yeah, we should be praying for Israel. We probably should be praying for Israel more often in our services than we do, right? We're very good, by the way, at praying for our own nation. I get it. We pray for our president, our economy, our situation. But maybe we should be praying for Israel, too. Jesus has a very close bond connection. You, you always have a, a close connection to the place you've been born. You know, the state I was born in, I, I have a bond where my family is from, my parents. Jesus has a special bond to Israel. That's where he's going to set up the capital of the world. He's creating a new Jerusalem, okay? Okay. I think we should be praying for Israel, not just, of course, they're, they're at war, but praying for the salvation of the relatives of Jesus. All right, what do you think is nation number two? Now, I can't remember what nation number two was. All right, what's nation number two? Oh, yeah, Ukraine. That makes sense, too. And it's because Ukraine is under war, and we had a missionary from the Ukraine, and there's lots and lots of evangelical Christians in the Ukraine, and they feel it's really a battle, a spiritual battle of atheistic Russia attacking the Christians of Ukraine and their witness. We should be, if we're going to be a church that prays for all nations, then we should probably take a little bit of time to pray for Israel and to pray for Ukraine. Okay, how about nation number, th nation number three? I'm going to tell you, up until about five months ago, I was like, I have never even heard of this nation. I don't even know where this nation is located. What's nation number three? Minama. My, wait, no, it's actually pronounced Myan Myanmar. It's an M... E sound, Myanmar. But, you know, my wife and I were playing with this. Every, every dictionary pronounced it differently. So there's, there's where the country's located, Myanmar. It's the number three country that they're saying Christians should pray for. And I'm like, who cares about this nation? How many of you ever heard of this nation? I mean, it's Burma. I know you've heard of Burma. Until five months ago, when our daughter in Cambodia met a man from Myanmar, Myanmar, and they're engaged, and they're getting married in August. His parents live there, and there's a civil war where the Christians are being killed. And that article says that's the number, that's the third nation that we should be praying for. And up until my daughter met this man who speaks four languages, he's a computer expert, works out of Hong, or Singapore, I would not even care about this country. I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even dawn on me. 
But now all of a sudden, I got a bond to this country, and we get to talk to them online. It's kind of interesting. And now we have a bond and feel bad for all the Christians that are being killed in this country. Country, what's country number five? Country number five. Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is one of the, it's being attacked, the Christians are being killed, and just so you know, it's one of the strongest alliance countries that we have. We have over 800 alliance churches in this country, and the Christians are being slaughtered and killed. How many, when's the last time we prayed for Burkina Faso that may have as many Christians in that country as we have here in the United States? When's the last time we prayed for the nations of the world, prayed for a nation that is alliance, lots of alliance Christians, seminaries, colleges, and they're being wiped out? When's the last time you heard about to pray for Burkina Faso? Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's the truth. So my ideal church is it's mission-minded, but it takes some of the time, instead of just the prayer time being about the USA and the election, it's like maybe every so often we should be praying for these other nations, praying for our brothers and sisters. I mean, that's what the verse actually says. Jesus says, my house should be a place of prayer for all the nations that they come to the Lord and pray for their protection as the Christians and it's almost in every nation it's usually the Christians that are being killed 